Okay guys, I want to do a video here on the uh, HP server supplies. Uh, this one here is a HS TNS PL18. So this is 750 watts. Uh, it'll work, uh, you know, 100 through 240 volts. Um, so the way you would calculate this, you know, if you want to know current or amps, because they rate them at 62 and a half at 12 volts, which if you do the math is correct. So you take your wattage 750 and divide it by whatever voltage you set your power supply at after you do the modifications. Uh, so in this case, 15.6. Uh, so it'd be 48 amps roughly. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you um, how to modify this, get around the overvolt protection. Uh, so that you can modify these because this is you know 48 amps. That's a pretty hefty power supply um, So we'll show you how to get the voltage up and do the overvolt protection So let me start here by plugging this thing All right, so usually the first thing you need to do on this model Some of them use a jumper some of them need a resistor this one here takes a resistor, so let me move this out of the way. So, pin 33, which is your first one here, and pin 36, okay? Those are your two turn-on pins. You need a 470 ohm resistor across there for this particular model. Um, it has to have some kind of resistance there. Um, if not, if you just use a jumper on these for whatever reason, they don't like it, they flip out. So, 470 ohm. And then uh, you got a couple screws. So there's one here. There's four across the top. Like I said, I only got one in it because this is my test unit. Um, so, and then there's two on the bottom. And then there's usually, you know, a handle that goes across these two. But before you get to cracking this thing open, like I said, put your jumper in. Uh, 470 ohm, pin 33, or the first pin on top, to pin 36, the fourth one in, on the top. Okay? Let me mark these real quick for people. Uh, maybe if I can find a... Oh, I've got a red Sharpie sitting right here. Okay, so on these, this big trace here is positive. This one here is negative. If you can see that. On the other side, it's the same. So... Positive is always towards the outside. Negative is towards the center. Okay? On these. So, after you test it and verify that it works, the green light comes on. You have 12 to 12.2 12 volts. Then we can get to modifying. Pull all the screws out. Like I said, I only have one in mind because I've already had this one apart. So we'll pop our one screw out. So these you swing open and then pull down and it'll pop. These have these little tabs that lock it in place. Okay. On the cabinet there. So that's our top lid. It's off. All right. <clears throat> Real simple. Four screws. One up here. One down here. And then your two on the DC side. So we'll pop those out real quick. I'll do that with you here real quick here. Probably should have had another one of these already open so that I could, uh, you know, kind of switch to it and save a little bit of time. But I didn't think that far ahead, I guess. Maybe on the next one I'll do that. All right. Let's pull all these screws out. Sometimes you get lucky and flip it open. Tap them, they come out, there's three, of course there's one that wants to be goofy and not come out. There's always one to fight you. There we go. Alright, all four are out. Okay, so, what you're going to want to do, you got your screws out, you want to lift up on this side here. So you get it past this metal lip of the case. Okay, so you lift that up and pull it out. You don't have to pull it out far, just a little bit like that there. 
So, flip this over about like that. Okay. So, this board here is our overvolt protection, undervolt protection crowbar. Okay. On these particular models, it's a separate circuit. On some of the newer models, it's all on the control board, all on here. And you don't have to pull the board out of the casing. So let me zoom in here. Let's see here. Go ahead and figure this out. All right. So there's two transistors. So here's your big chip here, the transistor above it. Okay. You've got the two legs on top. It's going to be this one here. And then next to it, this one here, this other transistor. So these two pins is what you're going by. This will set your your overvolt and undervolt protection. So basically what you're doing is you're fooling uh, the transistor into thinking the voltage is lower. Transistor tells the chip, hey, we're not at our 12 volts yet because it thinks it's 12 volts. You know, whatever. <clears throat> this here will do, uh, this is a 5.1K. So with this one here, it will go up to 16.2. It will go down to 14 and a half, okay? You go any lower than 14 and a half with this resistor, the undervolt will kick on. Um, you can't really go past 16 volts because the DC filter caps are only 16 volts. So unless you change those, you know, um, but pretty simple, okay? So now after you get that all done, you will want to slide your board back in, put your screws in, put all four screws in before you power this up because it does use chassis for a ground. Um, and if you don't, oops, let me slide that back out. If you don't have all four screws in here and try to power it up, it will go bang. And then you're going to be like, oh, now. $10, $20, whatever you paid for the thing. If you got it for free, that's even better. But you still don't want to do destruction intentionally. You know, get all these screws in here. And then I'll show you how to uh, set our voltage. Okay, so on that overvolt, while I put these screws in here, let me talk to you about that. On the OVP protection, when you move that, you're moving the overvolt and the undervolt or the current. So when it when you pull too much current and the power supply dips below a certain voltage, it says, hey, that's too much, then it shuts down. Okay. So uh, this one here has a 5.1K uh, because of the voltage that it's set at. If you wanted to go lower, say you want... Um, I don't know, 13 and a half to 14 and a half volts or something. Um, 6.2 on the overvolt over protection board. 6.2 will change that factor. And then you can uh, uh, set the voltage lower. And I'll show you what resistors to use there too. Oh, I had that in there and it fell right out. This one by the AC jack is always a pain in the butt. It always wants to fight you. But yeah, that's the most important one because that's the AC ground. So you definitely got to have it in there. There you go. A little pain in the butt. I am not a video editor. Um, I don't do this as a profession. Um, so you're getting it raw, uncut, unfiltered. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know. Anyways, so we got our four screws put back in. One, two, three, and the fourth one up here that's always a bugger to get in. Okay, so we're going to flip our board over. I think this is zoomed out all the way. Yeah, okay. So here is our control board. Let me see my foam block here. Foam block to hold it up, maybe? Possibly? Okay. 
So, I'll move you over so we can see what's going on. Maybe, possibly. There we go. Okay. And I'll bring this in. Alright, so, on this here, if you fold this little protective cover, it goes under the board. If you fold this over, okay, let me find my pointer here. This control here, there's a pin directly under it. You want to go to the left of it one. So this is just a ground. You could actually go to the ground uh, on the DC output or anywhere. This is just a ground pin. So basically anywhere you can find ground, this is the easiest for me. Okay. And then this is our control here. Let me zoom that in some more. Yeah, this is our voltage control. Um, and it will solder to this leg here. Very simple. And then right here, which I've already removed it, there is a 100 ohm resistor that you need to take out or jump it, you know, with a little piece of wire or solder blob or whatever. Jump that there. You don't have to do that, but it will give you a little more um, variance when you uh, change your voltage. So with that still, with that 100 ohm still in there, <clears throat> it doesn't give you a, as wide of a range uh, for some reason. Yeah. So, real simple uh, to do these. And let's zoom back out. Okay, so now you got your power supply all modded. Let's uh, turn this back this way. Let's get our probes on. One, two. All right. Positive. I got yellow for positive today. That's just what I grabbed off the wall there. All right, so let's get this glare off of the meter there. Okay, so, and I'm going to tip this up. Yeah, you can still see that. Okay, so, I might have to hold it and do that. All right, so, you got all the screws in. You got your uh, control set, or your uh, voltage set, your mod done. This right here um, is a... Uh, what was it? Um, I think that one is a 6.2. So the 6.2 will give you, um, like I said, it'll, it'll go up a little past 16. It'll go down to 14 and a half. Um, you can go 5.6 there and it will go up to almost 18 and a half volts. Like I said, the DC filter caps are only 16 volts. So changes out if you're going to go that high. All right, we got everything uh, put back together. Looks like we are plugged in here. Okay, rock and roll. There we go. I got this one set at 16.2. So, um, this control here, let me fold this down. Where we just added our resistor, this is our control. How am I going to do this without getting my stupid hand in the way? Okay, so this will change your... As you can see, if I remember right, these go down to like 14 and a half, maybe. Yeah, that's the bottom. 14 and a half. And then all the way up. Nope. Nope, about 16. Or 15.6. All the way up. And like I said, that's a uh, 6.2K. So, and 5.1 on the overvolt for this particular model. So, you got her going. Rock and roll. I'm going to show you something here also. We have our green light. If you do this mod, you get it all set up for whatever voltage you're setting it at. Unplug the supply. Actually, it might be easier to do it down here. Unplug the supply, let it drain down. Now, if you don't have your OVP set correctly, this is what's going to happen. Well, it won't do it on this one, but it'll power up for a split second, and then that light will not come on. It'll still show voltage, you know, but as soon as you put a draw on it, any kind of current draw, it's going to shut off immediately. So after you do your mod, unplug it, power it down. Back in. So 
So your green light should come on. You should hear the fan on low and your voltage should pop back up. And then that's it guys. Pretty simple. Put the lid back on her, put the screws in, you're good to go. So like I said, this is the uh, uh, HSTNS PL18. So this is uh, an older model. They've been around for a long time, but um, they're inexpensive for 48 amps, you know. Uh, they're inexpensive. Um, pretty quiet. Um, I have tested these on the HF bands. Um, pretty quiet up to about 14.8 volts. You go past 14.8, they start making some trash in the lower frequencies of the HF band. Um, <clears throat> this one here is going to be used for a LiPo charger, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, 14.7, 14.8, keep it under there. Um, nice and quiet, uh, won't cause any radio interference with these ones here. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoy. Sorry, this video is so long. Like I said, I, I don't know how to edit, so <laughs> it is what it is. That's what you got. All right, see ya.